Good morning, everybody. It's Simon here from careermap.co.uk, the team behind bringing you National Graduate Week. And today we have a live event with QA, a world leading tech and digital skills organization. Uh, and we're joined by Kristen, who will be delivering the presentation. Uh, and she'll be talking about how to go from a grad to a digital consultant in just 12 weeks. Um, but before we get started, uh, you'll notice that there is a chat facility on the right hand side of the screen um, throughout the presentation if you've got any questions at all pop them in there uh, and we'll run through them at the end during the Q&A session um, but before we begin the presentation uh, Kristen would you like to just introduce yourself and give us a bit of a, a background of your role at QA Sure. Thank you so much, Simon. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining QA's National Graduate Graduate Week webinar. I'll be presenting today on how you can go from a graduate to a digital consultant in just 12 weeks. So just some uh, information about myself. I've been a marketing executive at Q8 for just over two years. I work very closely with schools and universities as well to help um, school leavers and graduates get into roles within the tech industry. I um, have an English literature and French degree from the University of Kent. Prior to joining QA, I've worked in lots of different sectors, including retail, um, in a primary school, and also at a tech startup. And in my free time, I'm a writer and a photographer. So I'll be taking you through the webinar this morning. Um, as Simon mentioned, if you do have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free, f please feel free to put them into the chat and we'll get to them at the end. So before we do begin, I just wanted to ask you guys a question. So we have a poll here. And I see some people have actually already answered, which is really interesting. So the question is, um, do you need a degree in computer science to get started in a career as a tech consultant? So nobody actually answered yes. 50% of people said not at all. And some people weren't sure. So that was just um, a quick introduction and just to see what everyone thinks about um, getting started in the tech industry and how you can do that. So before I get into the presentation, I just have a short video to show you. This will give you an overview of QA as a company and also give you some information on how you can get started in the tech industry. And I'll go into more detail about that throughout the webinar. So I will start the video now. The digital revolution has only just started. Devices are connecting people, cities and countries faster and more efficiently than ever before. Technology has become more and more ingrained in our everyday lives. We have cars that can drive themselves, fridges that ensure we never run out of milk, and computers that can learn from their own mistakes. Scary stuff? We don't think so. It's fast-paced. It's exciting. These technological advancements are driving global societal change and it's disrupting the rules of business. This will impact almost every company, every organization, every government and every job across the whole world. It is skilled people who are driving this digital transformation. So come join us. People that use technology well will be the ones in high demand. At QA, we will help you become the face behind the revolution. In just 12 weeks, we will empower you with the latest skills. You'll learn with people like you. You'll be inspired by our passionate tech mentors. You'll get to work with dynamic brands and businesses on a mix of different projects, collaborating with others so that no two days are the same. It's the start of your career journey in the sector to be in. Welcome to tech. Welcome to the QA Academy. Okay, so that should have just given you a bit of an overview of what I'll be talking about in the webinar today. So just a little bit more information about QA. So you, we are the UK's leading tech skills training provider. We work with everyone from apprentices and graduates who are at the very beginning of the, their careers, and we help them to get started in the tech sector. But we also help people who are looking to change their careers. Uh, we help them get started in the tech sector, and we help people develop their digital skills and capabilities. We've already helped over 1,500 grads fast track their careers in the tech sector through the QA Academy. 
So as I mentioned, we do specialize in tech. The UK's tech industry at the moment is absolutely booming. There is an estimated 100,000 new opportunities emerging every month, and tech, se tech salaries are above 53K. This is a vibrant and interesting sector to get started in, and people from all different backgrounds are looking to get started. The sector is becoming increasingly more diverse, and there's no one type of tech person. I think previously there have been misconceptions about who can get started in tech and the type of people who are working in the tech sector, but that stereotype is being completely broken and we have so many different people getting started in their careers today. So I'll talk to you about the Acuity Academy, which is the route for graduates to take to get started as tech consultants within the industry. So the Acuity Academy is a completely free 12-week training program. It's designed to fast-track graduates into careers as a tech consultant. You'll be training nine to five, five days a week over the course of 12 weeks, and you'll have the chance to develop really in-demand skills in specialist tech areas such as software development, DevOps, robotic process automation, cloud native, or PEGA. These words might be unfamiliar unfamiliar to you at the moment, but you'll build and develop your knowledge over the course of 12 weeks. We also train you in skills, um, soft skills that you'll need as a consultant, such as leadership skills, communication and flexibility. So this opportunity is open to anybody that currently holds a degree. We do ask that you're passionate about technology. You don't need to have any previous experience or any specific training, but you need to be willing to learn and be willing to um, work really hard to get through the course. So you can be from absolutely any degree background, whether that's history, finance, economics, it really doesn't matter. You just need to be willing to learn and have a passion to get started in the tech sector. So what will your journey as a consultant look like with QA? So it will begin with your application. When you apply, you'll have to complete two assessments. One will be a strength-based assessment and the second will be a cognitive assessment. Once you've completed and passed those, you'll have a call with the recruiter and then move on to the strength-based video interview. So now that you've passed your assessments, you've had your call, you'll move on to the 12-week training program with QA. Here, you will be trained in niche technologies that are in high demand and will also train you in the soft skills you need as a consultant. The training is designed to develop your technical and business expertise so that you can work with organizations across the UK as a tech consultant. Once you finish your training and pass the various assessments and projects associated with your training, you'll be deployed as a consultant with QA, you'll be a QA employee, and you'll then work across various organizations that we are partnered with and uh, bring digital transformation and help them with any sort of tech problems they may be having. What does the application process look like? I'll just have a quick video to play which goes into a little bit more detail about the application process for the QA Academy. So, what can you expect from today's application process and why should you bother completing it? If you're anything like I was a year ago, you'll be no doubt filling in countless forms and wondering if your CV and covering letter are good enough. Well, Good news, QA's process is different. You don't need a CV or a covering letter, and there are no awkward assessment centers. Instead, you'll get a glimpse inside the world of a tech company and understand the sorts of scenarios and situations you might be faced with in your first job with us. In a moment, you'll arrive at our portal homepage. You should go through each panel in turn and think about the scenario you're presented with. The process is intended to look at what motivates you, what you are passionate about, and how you handle certain situations. There are no wrong answers. Honest, there aren't. Difference is a good thing and should be celebrated. We all respond to situations differently. The process is intended to help QA understand more about you. Now for the practical bit. The application process will take around 60 to 90 minutes to complete. So find somewhere quiet and get comfortable. Try to complete it all in one go. Don't worry if you can't. You can save and come back to it if you have to. Oh, and press submit at the end so we can capture all of your answers. 
At the end, you'll be sent a detailed feedback report. It's brilliant. It lists out your key strengths and identifies areas in which you might be less strong. I often find myself referring to it now that I'm working too. And it should help you understand more about yourself and how you come across to potential employers now and in the future. Finally, a QA career advisor will be in touch to schedule an interview if we have a suitable vacancy for you. Best of luck. Okay, so that was just some more information about how you apply to the QA Academy. So as a graduate, there are so many options available to you um, about how you can get started in the tech industry. So why should you choose the Academy? So first and foremost, you'll be at the forefront of the tech industry. As I mentioned earlier, QA are a tech training provider, so we are ahead of the game when it comes to the most in-demand technologies. You'll also be trained by experts in their specific fields who have previously worked in the industry and are working with lots of different people to uh, give them skills and help them develop their tech capability. You'll also fast track the transition from university to workplace. In just 12 weeks, you'll be working as a fully capable tech consultant. And from there, you'll only just develop your skills and gain more and more experience. You'll also have access to specialized training in niche software. So as I, as I mentioned, this includes things like DevOps, software engineering, and cloud. You'll also have the chance to work as a consultant for industry leading companies such as Santander, IBM, and TalkTalk. Talk. And many of our consultants are players with really big brands such as these. Your learning is focused on projects, it's practical, and it's also hands-on. And whether you're learning uh, remotely uh, or learning in one of our centers, your learning experience will be interactive and it's based on the key consulting skills that you need. Once you've completed your training, we do offer ongoing support whilst you're a consultant with us. And we also offer, offer you opportunities to progress in your learning and in your tech knowledge. So we are a training company, so you can take part in any one of our courses. You'll have access to the Cloud, Cloud Academy, which is our virtual training center. And this is a chance for you to continue to develop your skills in the tech industry. So what are some of the technical skills that you'll be trained in? So first and foremost, before you start your training, you'll have some pre-learning modules to go through. This will equip you with the very basic understanding you need to get started on your 12-week training course. We do then train you in the very fundamental skills you need as a consultant. This includes things like agile training, which is really in demand at the moment. You'll then have very specific modules to complete. So the first few weeks of your course is very basic and gives you a very general intro into some tech skills, and then it will become more niche and more specific. Um, you'll also be trained in very customer specific tools. So we're very aware of the kind of products and tools our customers are using, and we train you in those. You'll have practical assessments at the end of each module to see how much you grasped and how much you've learned and if you can take it to the next level. We'll also uh, conduct technical interviews throughout your journey through the academy, which will be helpful for you as you begin your journey as a consultant. We'll also then give you um, knowledge as a tech consultant. So you'll have very specific modules on uh, consultant skills. We'll give you interview preparation, uh, professional skills workshops. You'll have chance chances to interact with some of our clients. This could be in person or virtually. We'll give you seminars on things like CV and cover letter writing, and you have the chance to network with your peers and other professionals in the sector. These are just a few of the clients that our consultants have gone to work with once they've completed their 12 week training. We have clients in the public sector. So for example, the home office or HMRC. We have some consultants working in the commercial sector with companies like Santander, IBM, Siemens, and a few more that are on the screen. And we also have uh, these partners on the right hand side of the screen. And you have the chance to earn certifications with some of these partners as you go through the academy and also during your time as a consultant. Now let's talk salary, as that's obviously quite important for everybody. So the initial 12 week training, training period is unpaid, but we do provide you with a bursary of 10 pounds per working day. Once you've completed your training and you begin your deployment as a consultant, your starting salary will be 23,500, which is quite competitive for your first job 
out of university and as a general starting salary. If you are placed with a customer in London, you'll have a starting salary of £26,500 as the cost of living is, of course, higher in London. After your first year, you are guaranteed a pay rise of £2,000. So what kind of support do we offer you at QA as you go through the academy and as a consultant? So at the beginning, when you're applying, you have a recruitment team to help you. They'll be in touch, send you reminders about applications and are on hand to answer any questions you may have. As you go through the academy on your 12 week training, we have the academy operations team to support you. Whilst you're training, you have your mentors and uh, the people that deliver your sessions. They'll be again on hand to help you with any technical um, problems or any things you may not understand during your course. And then once you're working as a consultant, there's a consultant liaison team who are there to support you. We do ask for a two year commitment. So at the end of your 12 weeks training, you will be employed by QA on a permanent basis, but you do need to stay with us for a minimum of two years. So this is because we are investing quite a lot into you as a consultant, into your training and your development. And it just wouldn't make sense to then kind of just let you go and work for somebody else. So we do ask for a two year commitment. Once you have completed your two years, you are free to stay on with QA as a consultant, which many people do choose to do. Or you can go into the next chapter in life, move into another job. But you'll have all the training and experience that you need. The world will really be your oyster at that point. I have spoken about this, but I'll just touch on it very briefly again. These are just some of the areas you could specialize in as a tech consultant. The first is DevOps. This is a really high growth area of tech at the moment. There's a lot of interest in DevOps. It is a combination of development and operations. You then also have software development. This is the back end creation of things like websites and apps, a really fun and creative um, area of tech to work in where you'll need coding skills as well. You have things like Pega, which is a Java-based platform used to develop and manage applications that can automate business processes. And RPA, which is Robotics Process Automation, this is also another automotive um, sort of technology, but it's based on robots. So we do ask a few things of you. Um, there's a few eligibility criteria you do need to get started in the academy. The first is that you need to have an interest in technology. There's no point in going through the, the application process and going through 12 weeks of training if that's just something that you're not inter interested in and is very, as it is very intense. Um, you do need to be ge geo flexible, so you need to be able to work anywhere in the UK and be willing to relocate. As a consultant, you may be working in Liverpool for three months, in London for a year. You move where the work is. And this is actually really good because you have a chance to explore different cities in the UK. And there is work. You just need to be willing to go to where the work is. You also do need to be eligible to work in the UK. We ask that you have excellent interpersonal, verbal and written communication skills. You must be able to commit to a full time permanent role. And finally, you need to be a British or European Union passport holder and have been based in the UK for a minimum of five years with no more than three months abroad. This is because um, some of our consultants are working with security companies and there's a high level of security clearance that you do need to go through. So it's important that you can tick all these boxes. So we do have two consultants joining us live today and you'll have the chance to ask them questions and they'll also be talking about their experiences. But we've, before we uh, go to them, I just want to highlight a few of our consultant stories. The first is from Andrew. So he's currently working as a DevOps consultant. He's already been through the 12 weeks training. I won't read through everything. I'll just kind of read a little bit of his story so you can get a flavor of what you can expect. So this is what Andrew has said. Before QA, I had never even heard of DevOps, which may be the case with some of you today. I now work on a high profile government program whose mission is to steer outdated IT systems into the future. I enjoy the creative aspect, ro aspect role of the job and day to day here at the client consists largely of hands on keyboard time. So that's Andrew's story. We do also have a case study from Nazim, who's currently working as a DevOps consultant at one of our government clients, the Her Majesty's Courts and Tribunal Services. So again, I'll just touch briefly on what he's said. QA has trained me from the ground up in DevOps, an area that I previously 
had no experience in. After the three months of training in the academy, I was immediately ready to work with highly sensitive systems in a government position. So if you're ready to get started today, you already have your degree, you've graduated, that's great. We do recruit all year round and we fill about two to four cohorts every single month. So if that's the case, if you already got your degree and you're ready to get started in your training and ready to get started in a career as a tech consultant, please scan the QR code. I will give you a few seconds to do so. Um, this will just take you to a short form. You'll be asked a few questions such as name, email, um, date of birth, a few other things. Um, once you filled in this form, one of our recruiters will be in touch with you with the next steps of your application. So that's if you've already got your degree and you're ready to get started in your training. If you are still completing your degree, you've in your first, second or third year and you're not ready to start just yet, you can scan this QR code over here. All this will do is register your interest and let us know that you have an interest in starting on the QA Academy once you have graduated. The forms do look very similar. So we'll ask for, again, name, email, and a few other details, um, but you won't be notified about assessments just yet. We will stay in touch with you to send you um, interesting content or information or events, things like that. So if you haven't completed your degree, you can scan this QR code to register your interest in the QA Academy. Just to mention some changes that have been happening during COVID, which I'm sure everybody has experienced um, in the sense of working from home or life being a bit more virtual. So at the moment, the 12 week training academy is still currently online. There is plans to move it um, to in person, face to face, but that hasn't yet been implemented. So at the moment, training is online and you may have to work from home as a consultant, depending on the client you're working with. So now it's time to hear from some of our consultants. Um, I will actually stop the presentation. So we have joining us today, um, Alistair and Rohan, who are consultants with QA. So Alistair and Rohan, if you want to turn your cameras on, um, turn your mics on and just introduce yourselves um, and then we'll get into some questions. Alistair, we can start with you. Sure, yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. Yeah, my name is Arthur Hansen. Uh, I'm a I'm 24 years old, and I'm a cloud native consultant at IBM. Amazing! Thank you so much, Rohan. Would you like to introduce yourself, please? Sure. Uh, my name is Rohan. I'm 30 years old, and um, like Arthur, I've gone through the cloud native program and uh, now I'm working as a consultant. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And um, who, which client are you currently work with, working with? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I'm now currently working uh, with IBM. Uh, okay. Great. Um, so prior to applying for the academy, Alistair, do you just want to tell us a little bit about what you were doing? Were you at uni? Had you just graduated? What were you up to? Yeah. So um, so I was part of the uh, September 2020 um, cohort. But before that, I uh, graduated from Hull University in uh, computer science. Okay, great. And yourself, Rohan? Uh, yeah, for me, I didn't actually have a background in tech. Mm -hmm. um, I did biomedical, biomedical sciences and then uh, after working in the NHS decided I needed a career change um, because tech was my passion. Mm -hmm. And uh, QA for me was that opportunity. Uh, so um, yeah, uh, honestly, I have to say, you know, thank you QA because this allowed me to make my career change and live my dream. <laughs> That's great. And I th I'm sure a lot of people are sort of in your position. They maybe didn't consider tech right after graduating. They didn't have a tech yeah. background, but it is possible to reskill and change into this uh, career. Um, so, Alistair, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Did you always have the intention of working in the tech industry? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, just came out of university with a computer science degree. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I didn't really, because I I went into the um, the cloud native, but it wasn't really my um, my my absolute choice for a number of years. It's yeah. it sort of like grew from uh, going to university and sort of um, looking at just the different technologies out there. Because yeah. I mean, it, it goes without saying that it, technology is such a, a huge area, yes. lots yeah. of different things you can go into. Definitely, and um, but. When I went with QA, they offered the um, the cloud native course, and I I just thought that that sounded really good. 
um, the the content that I offered and the the opportunities afterwards. Um, I think um, it really grabbed me there. That's great. And Rohan, so you mentioned you studied biomedical science at university. So when was it that you sort of thought about starting in tech? Like what triggered that passion? Um, I had the opportunity when I was working in the NHS to work alongside a, a, a startup tech company. And kind of having that exposure made me realise actually um, technology was kind of what got me up in the morning. And um, uh, as I got a bit more exposed to it, started asking developers uh, how things worked um, and that kind of thing, uh, I've realised uh, I was actually doing the wrong thing. I needed to get into mm -hmm. tech. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the rest is history, really. That's really interesting. And um, when you're graduating or even looking to kind of change careers, there's so many options of training available to you. What made the QA Academy stand out to you, both of you? Um, and what made you actually apply? Um, Alistair, we can kind of start with you again. Yeah, um, I think for me, um, I think it was just the the sheer amount that the course offered in terms of um, the different skills that you'll learn. Because like in, um, you were showing some of the alumni um, earlier, uh, yeah. people who were saying that they'd never heard of DevOps and mm. things like that. It's just, um, it's, yeah, they, they teach you so much in such a short amount of time. And then the uh, the opportunity to act, uh, the opportunity afterwards to um, to really put your skills to the test working in the company. I think that really stood out for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what QA did definitely. And yourself, Rohan? Yeah, I think um, for me, what stood out was when I was speaking with the recruiter at the time. Um, they actually helped me with uh, giving me information as to what QA offered, and it's a lot more in depth. Uh, than, uh, say, what I was getting online and um, what other, uh, say, um, other companies were kind of offering. Um, the content of the course was, uh, like I was saying, you know, was very in-depth and there's a lot of, uh, you do get through a lot in, in the 12 weeks, um, uh, but it's well worth it, really. <laughs> like. If you if you uh, put in the hard work, you will get to places where you want to go to. Yeah, that's so true. Um, I did have a few more questions, but I did notice that we have quite a few in the chat and I want to make sure that we really um, get to those. I'm not even sure where to start. Um, so, Ollie, you've asked what employees do you work with? So uh, I did mention in the presentation that we work with some government clients. So this includes um, the Home Office. Her Majesty's Tribunal and Court Services. We do work with um, all the consultants go on to work with uh, co companies like IBM, like Alison and Rohan are doing currently. Um, there's, uh, sorry, Santander, Talk Talk, Capgemini, uh, BAE Systems. Um, so quite a few big name clients, but then there's also SMEs or startups. So there's quite a variety of clients that we do work with. Um, Libby, what is the job role of a digital consultant? So I'll actually pass that on to you, Alistair and Rohan. I, um, both of you can answer, um, just to go into detail about what is the actual job role of a digital consultant. Yeah, so um, speaking from well, our current role, um, what we do, it's um, so we get put into um, teams uh, of software developers and um, we work with them to um, just uh, using things like agile methodology to plan projects, what we're going to do, um, and um, train on the different technologies that we're going to be doing. Um, it's that sort of thing. I, Rohan, I don't know if you want to um, sure. on that a little bit. Yeah, I, I mean, one thing about tech you'll you'll find is that you're constantly learning. You're always learning because there's always something new just around the corner. And um, like Alice is saying, um, you get put into like a dev team. And with our role, we were kind of going in kind of on the DevOps side of things. So a lot of our knowledge and training was based around that. But our roles actually kind of evolved more from that. We're 
we had the opportunity to actually work on a project from start. So we're not picking up from it from anywhere else. And um, that's given us the exposure to a lot of different technologies, not just on um, the cloud side of things, but also on actually building out, out applications, both on the front end and the back end. Um, so this, it's very diverse. There's, there's always something new that I definitely find myself I'm learning each day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and that's what keeps it very exciting as well. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, so we have a qu question from Matt. It says, do you have any AI courses as I'm keen to get into this field? So we don't have anything specific to artificial intelligence at the moment, but um, this is definitely a springboard to a career in something like AI. If you just start off on the academy, um, go into something like software development or DevOps, you'll have all the foundation skills, you have the experience to then progress into something like AI. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, Raya, you're asking, do you get qualifications from this program? So you, do you guys want to talk a little bit about the qualifications you get and also the opportunities to kind of gain uh, things like AWS qualifications and things like that? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, the QA uh, offer lots of courses themselves, which mm -hmm. prep you for certifications. And once you're a consultant, definitely um, you can get, uh, get put forward for certifications. And um, currently right now I'm working towards uh, AWS, uh, the CCP, mm -hmm. uh, which is the Cloud uh, Practitioner, sorry, uh, for AWS. And um, I don't know, Alistair, if you want to add on to that. Yeah, similar, um, similar position for me, um, looking at uh, web services, AWS, um, looking at doing my um, cloud developer certification. Um, but yeah, like Rahan said, you've in that, uh, in the particular area we're doing, there's a lot of opportunities you can do, um, mm -hmm. yeah. to, yeah. um, get certifications. Definitely. And these will continue to open doors for you as you move through the, the industry. And you also have the experience on your side, which is, which is really good. Um, Millie, you're asking what class degree do you need? Um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what class degree you have. Uh, we don't technically need a degree for this program. We like people to have a degree because you have, um, you've been learning for a long period of time, you have the kind of skills um, that degree holders tend to have. So it doesn't really matter what um, class degree you have or what degree background it is. You just need to make sure that you are passionate about tech. You're willing to go through some intensive training. Um, that's really it. Um, yeah. Sorry, did you wanna add something? Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, um, when, you, when you're in your cohort, you get, um, there's a lot of people who are from a lot of different backgrounds, mm -hmm. like Burham was, didn't, initially have a background in tech but went into yeah. into QA and you get a lot of people like that who are different yeah. levels but yeah. yeah it just um like you said it was it's you just need sort of a, a good foundation of um having a passion for tech yeah um yeah. then you can really build up from there yeah for yeah. sure for on sure. that as well if I could just uh yeah, sure. elaborate a bit more um one of the things actually you uh what I definitely found uh going through that program was um yeah, you have so many diverse people there, uh, but also um, it's my experience was kind of like I used to live in Poland for a little bit, bit of time. And when you're in the country uh, with the people, with the culture and the language, you, you are going to learn up, pick up things yeah. anyway. And it's that kind of environment in the QA boot camp. Um, you are surrounded by technology with people who want to learn technology and people who are very knowledgeable about technology. So you're going to pick up things much quicker than you actually think you will as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure that's really reassuring because sometimes coming from a background with absolutely no experience, you think, okay, can I handle this? But yeah. definitely you can, you can definitely do it. Um, Colin, you're asking, I graduated three years ago. Would this be open to me too? Yes, 100%. Definitely open to you. Even if you graduated five, six years ago, please definitely go ahead and apply. This opportunity is definitely for you. Um, Javier, you're asking, do you provide any financial support during the training? So you do get a bursary during the training. So the training is completely free. Um, it's not paid training. So you will kind of not be working for a period of three months, but you do get a bursary um, for the period of training. Do you guys sort of have, any, have any tips about maybe how to best manage that financially or how, how you did it? Because, uh, I mean, it can be a bit of a commitment for some people. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it might just be me, but I'm very meticulous about um, 
what I'm spending. So mm -hmm. I, I do keep my receipts and everything alert and uh, make sure that um, I keep to my set budget of what I want to be spending. Yeah. Uh, that's really the only yeah. tip I can give, really. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, because um, our my cohort, because um, with lockdown, everything's still being work from home. So I'll, it still still living at home, there's there's much less expense, right. but still, yeah. yeah, you have to sort of um, keep tabs of what you spend. Yeah, but. definitely. Yeah, I think it's a bit of a sacrifice for those three months, but knowing that you're kind of getting the job at the end with a really good starting salary, um, it's still a really good opportunity. Um, Jack, you're asking, where do you recruit? We recruit all over the UK. So especially now that training's virtual, usually it's in Manchester or London, but now that it's virtual, it's a lot more opportunity for people from all over to kind of participate in the training as it's virtual. Um, someone's asking, is all the training online and what equipment would I need to start the training? So yes, at the moment, everything is virtual. Um, you need a laptop, a good internet connection, and yeah, I think I think that's it, right, um, Alistair? Yeah. So um, yeah, uh, when I when I did it, I um, got a uh, we all got given laptops. Oh, to perfect. Work from home. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just a laptop and an internet connection is all you yeah. really need. Yeah, that's it, and maybe a quiet space so you can focus. I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, what else? How flexible are the training hours and would I be able to have any days off during the 12 weeks? Um, you guys probably have more info, but I will say it's nine to five, five days a week. There's not much flexibility for that yeah, it's a bit, period. It is it's kind of like a like how you would it's like any other full time job, yeah. really. It's sort of yeah. nine to five thirty. Yeah. yeah. But um I'm not sure um about flexibilities. Um Yeah. But, um, I, I believe, I don't believe there's too much flexibility, um, as you are kind of learning as a cohort, you're learning as a group, you're going through like the process together. Um, I'm sure if there's, um, specific circumstances, please do speak to the consulting liaison team. They'll be able to help you and support you in that for a specific kind of reason. But generally it's not very flexible. You kind of just move through the course in that 12 week period and, and then you'll get started. Once you are working as a consultant, you'll have annual leave, all that sort of thing that comes with having a full-time job. Um, Steve is asking what type of salary package is offered for this role. So your starting salary is £23,500. If you are in London, it is £26,500 as the living cost is higher. And there is a bonus at the end of your first year. But as I mentioned in the presentation, you do have a two-year commitment once you finish the training to stay with QA as a consultant. Um, Mikhail, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your names wrong. Mikhail's asking, does this feedback also offer ways that you can improve the weaknesses in the report? I'm not too sure about that question. Um, if you can just um, specify what you mean, um, just kind of type it again, and we'll hopefully come back to that. Um, do you get to choose the employer you work for or does QA decide for you? So you don't get to choose the employer. You kind of go to where the work is. Um, that's why you need to be geo-flexible. You could be working in absolutely any part of the country with any employer. Is this a full-time position or just training? Um, Sally's asking. So it is both. It starts off with 12 weeks of full-time training. Once you finish the training, you're employed as a consultant with QA, and that's when you have the full-time job. So it is a bit of both. You start with training, move on to the full-time job. Please, could you share some more information on the networking available? Um, I don't know how much networking is happening at the moment, as obviously everything is virtual, but maybe you can shed some light on the networking opportunities that are available to you guys, um, Alistair and Rohan, if you do have information on that. Um, I think networking for us has been largely along the lines of what's happening with IBM at this point. Okay. Um, yeah. uh, there's, there's always uh the like product updates that are happening and that's been a good opportunity to get to know more people at ibm uh, but then there's also been um like little uh events that have been held both by qa and ibm yes so um in terms of networking so far um there's been lots of opportunities just a question of like uh, are you free enough to do it or do you have something right. else going on at the time Right. And is it mostly sort of in virtual at the moment or are things starting to become a little bit more face to face? Um, 
Well, so far the, the contract was supposed to be remote, um, mm -hmm. but um, with talk of going back to the office, um, what's, what has been maintained is that um, uh, as developers, we uh, retain that right to say, okay, you know, would remote working be more viable and should we stay that way? Uh, right. It kind of makes sense because the develop, development team right now, as far as I'm aware, there's only one person that's, or maybe two people who are based at the project site. Okay. Everyone else is dotted around the country. So it doesn't make much sense to get everyone together in one place. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, what else? Holly's asking how are the placement companies decided. So the placement companies are decided um, depending on the needs of the clients and what sort of specialism that you've been trained in at the academy and, and what the need the client has. So that's that's how it's decided. How many positions are available each year and how competitive is the application process? So we do, uh, the recruiters try to fill two to four cohorts a year. So you can apply really at any time and you'll be then put forward for kind of the next cohort that will be starting um, so that I'm not sure the specific number on each cohort. How many people are in your cohort? I'd say about 20 people. Okay. Online. Yeah. So something yeah, like roughly about the same. 20. Yep. Um, and in terms of competitiveness, what I would say is the application process is quite, uh, I don't know what the word is, like not, it's quite intensive. Like I think you, you saw on the video, it, you need about 60 to 90 minutes to complete it. It's, it's not a very, it's not an easy, just, oh, I can do it quickly. Um, it's quite an intensive application process. That's why you do need to have that passion and that willingness to, to um, want to go through the process. Um, did you guys have anything to add? On the application process for um i remember with mine i had to do like a um like an exercise in writing python um but it was quite it was very basic level yeah. um but it's it's just something where it um everyone's sort of on to get everyone on the same level in terms of um how to sort of write basic code mm -hmm. and things like that and that's what you do when you when you actually properly start the um the cohort you all start at the same level yeah. um so you all sort of grow together yeah um on that kind of uh, python test i mean the, the real um test is, is not so much that oh it's it's python uh it's more a case of do you have uh that approach to um how to code and that's what they're really looking for yeah yeah uh, is this a sales role? Uh, Andrew's asking. It's not a sales role. It is a uh, tech consulting role. Um, this is a question for you, Alison Rohan. Eve's asking, what do you think was the most challenging part of the academy? That's a good question. Mm. Mm. That's a good question. Um, for me, um, before coming to QA, I hadn't actually done a lot of coding. I've uh, done a little bit with on the front end side doing basic web, uh, websites with WordPress. Um, and that, that was more just for me to kind of get a feel for things and yeah. really think, okay, do I want to do this or not? Um, and then when it came to QA, um, we did Java and that was my first time doing a proper programming language. Mm -hmm. So um, going from no kind of um, knowledge of Java to having a basic foundational knowledge of Java. Um, it will. It, there is a little bit of a steep learning curve when when you've got when you're coming from nowhere. But as I said earlier, um, the fact that you've got so many people around you, a doing the same thing, and b the what impressed me the most was the uh, the instructors. Um, they their ability to be able to change the teaching approach to adapt to how you might need it yeah. uh, was really good. I'm a very visual learner and mm -hmm. like to get my hands dirty with the code. Yeah. Uh, but some other people prefer to more say lecture based and then do things kind of approach. Um, and yeah, I mean, it worked for me. It worked for a lot of other people as well. So yeah, it, mm. yeah, it, it went well. Okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah. so um, with me, it's, um, because with cloud native you do um you do devops as part of it so um that's the second um 
the second topic you do. Um, but I thought that was the hardest because I think like other um, other consultants would say like um, it DevOps is a very new thing uh, yeah. for them. And even even with my degree, I never never really heard of DevOps or covered it very very little. And so going to it, um, it was very yeah, it was very hard to sort of get my head around the the different technologies around it. But like Rohan said, um, the I thought the instructors were very very good at um teaching it and they are very they are very flexible to different people's different styles of learning so people would be more like rohan said they'd be more lecture based and mm -hmm. and then applying it or people would just be purely um practical based and you do the um the training does offer both of those um yeah. but it's it's been really good i think with like coming from uni, coming from a computer science degree, and then to uh, QA, it's really kind of like solidified things mm. in my head, um, especially with coding as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, it really helps. So, yeah. Great. Um, Raheem's asking, I'm an international student about to finish my MSc digital transformation program. Is QA also suitable for international students that's very enthusiastic about technology? So um, in terms of that, as long as you have a European Union passport, yes, this program is definitely available to you. Um, the reason it's not available to anybody else is just because of the security clearance that you do need for some of clients that we work with. So at the moment, if you don't have a European or British passport, Unfortunately, this probably isn't the best route for you, but that is something that we are kind of looking into for the future. Um, Stephanie's asking, could you both explain how the relocating for roles works? Because you have the insight information for that. But in like personal um, experience, it's been, I think Rohan touched on it earlier. Um, with the with our with our current roles we're still working from home um so i think we don't really have much experience with terms of like moving on site but, yeah um rohan i don't know if you want to give a bit more insight uh yeah if memory serves right i think what would happen is typically you would move to wherever the the project is based yeah. uh, and to work on site there um with regards to um moving and, and things like that i think qa will be able to help and Definitely. there can be some discussion that can be had yeah. ar around that yeah. um but unfortunately i i haven't had that uh, uh experience yet it's, yeah. it's all been working from home so yeah yeah, yeah but um i think if if the opportunity was there to relocate qa will definitely provide you support yeah. for that yeah they are they are with you every step of the way yeah so as i mentioned there's the consultant liaison team so they'd be able to support you with relocation if that's something that you would need to do for the role if you can commute that the role great um but that that, that team is there to support you with things like relocation that kind of thing so the support is there but mostly things are virtual now so that makes it a lot easier for everyone um, Eric is saying, asking, I'm completing a master's degree in a different field. Will I get correspondence and training so that I can do so upon completion? Yes, Erica, definitely. That's fine. You can come from absolutely any degree background. Um, hopefully you did have a chance to look at that QA code and I can go back and show you in a second. Um, for anybody who's still doing their degree, just uh, fill in your details there. We'll be in touch with you with uh, relevant information and content, but also when the time comes for you to apply, we'll send you the um, links to the assessments that you'll need. So Erica, yes, that is definitely something that you can do. And I will just go back to the slide in a second. Um, I'll just ask this last question from Tom. Will I be able to access any QA resources after I finish my training? I think yes. Do you guys mm. probably have more information on that, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, when we're working with IBM, you still have access to all, all the QA's resources. Um, you can still um, complete learning modules, things yes. like that. So yeah, so everything is still open to you. Excellent. Yeah. And actually going further on that, um, QA help you with trying to uh, build your career, but uh, you can also go to the, uh, to the careers team and say, you know, I've got an interest in this mm -hmm. and uh, I want to know a bit more. 
um, can you advise on any kind of uh, courses or things that I should be taking or, uh, to get a head start in it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So much courses and content available to you um, from QA for you to develop your career. Um, so what I will do quickly, just in case anyone did miss it, I will quickly bring up the QR codes. Um, have you got a link for anybody in the chat? Christine? Yes, I can do. I will do that as well. So this okay. is if you are ready to start. This is your QR code, and I will quickly get that up as well. Take screenshots, everybody. Screenshot, <laughs> yes, for sure. So this is for you sent that to me. Sorry, one second. I will I'll put the link in the chat as well. Some great questions, I really Yeah, really, really good questions. I really hope we could have answered that as much as we can. So this yeah. is the link. If you are ready to apply, please fill in this link over here. And then if you are not yet ready to apply, you're still completing your degree, this is your link. But as I mentioned, there's a QR code there as well. So let me bring that up for anyone who's missed it. If you're still completing your degree. So yeah, just copy and paste that. And yeah, um, I did also just want to mention one more thing. Um, if you are completely new to tech, you've never considered a career in tech, you've never heard of some of the things we're talking about, we do run free coding courses. They are virtual, they run on a Saturday. It's an initiative called Teach the Nation to Code. So I've put the link here as well. Visit our website, it will tell you a little bit more about the programs we offer. It's completely free, virtual, you complete it on a Saturday. And it'll just give you a little taster into the world of coding, give you some background information, and you can see if that's something of interest to you and if you do wanna get started in the tech sector. So that link is there as well. Um, I will also put my email address if you have any further questions, please feel free to drop me an email. Um, I'm happy to answer them myself or pass it on to our recruitment team or pass it on to our two consultants um, to answer. So any further questions, please feel free to contact me. Uh, my email address is in the chat and it's also on the screen in a second. There we go. Um, but if there's no more questions, um, I think that's the end of the webinar. Thank you so much to Alistair and Rohan for joining and for giving up your time to share your experiences. And thank you for uh, joining the webinar as well, everybody who's um, joined and to just taking the time to listen to, um, yeah, what we've had to say. I'd just like to say a big thank you to the guys from QA. Um, fantastic presentation. Hope everybody enjoyed that. They covered a hell of a lot, but you know, if you still got, lot, yeah. <laughs> if you still got questions, <laughs> head over to their website, email Kristen, yes, um, and I'm sure they get back to you. And I just want to say, basically, you know, we've still got a few more events left for National Graduate Week. We've got uh, the NHS today at one o'clock. We've got Virgin Media at three o'clock today, and then we've got Speedy at five. Uh, and then a few more tomorrow from the likes of Arcadis, UCFB and the BBC. Um, and we also have recorded this session. Uh, so if anybody wants to recap on it, uh, just head over to careermap.co.uk next week under the Career Map Live tab uh, and you'll be able to uh, reference it at any time that you want. Uh, and so, yes, thanks for everybody joining today. We will say goodbye now. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you, yeah, thank you everyone. Thank you. Bye bye.